Hi there, welcome back to the Community of Readers video blog. We're following the Old Testament readings for the Monkey Bar Challenge, and this week we are looking at the last ten chapters of Isaiah. This is called A Dream Worth Living. We've been journeying through the whole Isaiah story, one that covers over 200 years. Isaiah, prophet in the court of the king in the 8th century BC, through to the Isaiah community, those who stand in his tradition, who are in exile in Babylon, dreaming of a new world, of a new empire, of Zion. And now in these last 10 chapters, we're back, back in the land in which Jerusalem is the central city, but now it's called Yehud. It's a Persian province in the backwater of that particular empire. And though the Jews have been free to resettle their promised land, the promised empire of the middle of Isaiah has not come to pass. So, we're in this picture, in this predicament, where the people of Yahweh, those in the Isaiah tradition anyway, are wrestling with the question, why has this not come true? Here we are. Here is the new dawn. Here is the new moment of possibility. Why is this empire in which all the nations of the earth, all of our enemies, everybody from round about was going to come and worship Yahweh on his temple in Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Why was this not happening? And these last 10 chapters of Isaiah give one overwhelming reason. Justice is not being done. Isaiah 58, very famous passage, asking the question, isn't the fast, Yahweh speaks, isn't the fast I've chosen not to just go through the religious rituals, but to loose the cords of the oppressed, to proclaim freedom for captives? Isn't that the fast? Isaiah 58 exposes a religion with frame, but no heart. But what's interesting about this chapter is that the promises, the promises are linked to the restoration of the city of Jerusalem. If you do these things, your light will break forth like the morning dawn and the glory of Yahweh will be your rear guard. And you'll be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Now those things for us have become metaphorical and there's no reason why they shouldn't be but if we imagine ourselves into Isaiah's context or the context of the Isaiah community at this time it's real bricks, stone walls, real houses, real dwellings, real streets. That's what we're talking about we're talking about the link between justice, national restoration, and in the context of the Isaiah of chapters 40 to 55 that we looked at last week, this is not just a restoration of the nation, this is preparation in the dream of national glory. This theme happens as well in chapter 61, a massively famous part of Isaiah, because it's the bit that Jesus quotes in Luke chapter 4, his kind of manifesto moment uh, in Nazareth, in the synagogue. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, freedom to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, a year of jubilee. The bit he doesn't say, amongst others, is, uh, is verse 4 in uh, Luke chapter 61. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. The context, original context for Jesus' words, were a vision of national glory. Now, this is 
part of the whole narrative of Isaiah. Right back at the start in chapter 6, we talked about how this is a vision of a heavenly court, celestial beings surrounding Yahweh, hammering out the path for the nation of Israel. And in that path, Yahweh, as the sovereign God, has ordained that Israel will go into exile. But her exile will only be temporary because the glory of Zion, of a restored Israel, greater even than the Israel of David and Solomon, is coming. And that's the dream, that's the storyline of Isaiah. And you can imagine the bemusement, the pain, the soul searching of the Isaiah community back in this Persian province of Yehud, later to be called Judea. But people are wrestling with the question, why has this not come true? The exile came true, after all. Isaiah was right about that. Why is the promise of glory not yet come true? Justice and the restoration and growth and greatness of a nation go hand in hand. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me uncomfortable. There is so much about Isaiah that is beautiful, profound. The wolf lying down with the lamb. The lion eating straw like an ox. These are powerful images of peace that complement some of the earlier images of beating uh, swords into plowshares. We said... If there was a vision for our times, that is it. And yet when we look around now at Jerusalem, at the holy city, at the centre of everything Isaiah dreamed of, we see new ca- news casts of suicide bombers, of conflict, of one occupation after another. And we think to ourselves, is justice and national glory, a good recipe for peace, for the shalom for which the whole Bible yearns. Is that the route? Is that the path? And when Jesus in chapter 4 quotes Isaiah 61, he leaves out the bit about the walls being restored, just as he leaves out the bit about this being the day of the Lord's vengeance. I don't think accidentally. I think on purpose. And then he goes on to talk about how Elijah had gone to a widow in Zarephath, in Gentile country, implying that this Messiah that they dreamed of wasn't just for the Jews, but had a mission to the Gentiles. And that's the reason they tried to push him off a cliff. The vision of Isaiah is an ambiguous vision. And I think Jesus dealt with it in an ambiguous way. And we should think carefully how we accept it into our lives as the word of God, which I deeply believe that it is. But that doesn't come without filter. That filter that we apply has to be intelligent, courageous and careful. What is justice and how does it link to national glory? How can we pursue a justice with the same passion as the pages of Isaiah bid us to do without a vision of national glory? What is our vision of a nation? I'm English, British. Do I dream for national glory for my country? Do I believe that decisions of justice should be made in the national interest? Or is there a greater vision at work? The wolf lying down with the lamb, the lion eating straw like an ox in all the hubbub, the noise of nationalism, still the vision of peace is a dream worth living.